Talks with Ramana Maharishi Talk 64 Maharishi The dead are indeed happy they have got rid of the troublesome overgrowth the body the dead man does not grieve the survivors grieve for the man who is dead do men fear sleep on the contrary sleep is courted and on waking up every man says that he slept happily one prepares the bed for sound sleep sleep is temporary death death is longer sleep if the man dies while yet alive he need not grieve over others death one's existence is evident with or without the body as in waking dream and sleep then why should one desire continuance of the bodily shackles Let the man find out his undying self die as the ego and be immortal and happy Talk 65 A visitor is the world perceived even after self realization Maharishi from whom is this question is it from a gnani a nor of the self or from an agnani one who is ignorant of the self devotee from an agnani one who is ignorant of the self maharishi realize to whom the question arises it can be answered if it arises after knowing the doubter can the world or the body say that it is or does the seer say that the world or the body is the seer must be there to see the objects find out the seer first why worry yourself now with what will be in the hereafter maharishi continued what does it matter if the world is perceived or not perceived have you lost anything by your perception of the world now or do you gain anything where there is no such perception in your deep sleep it is immaterial whether the world is perceived or not perceived the agnani sees the gnani active and is confounded The world is perceived by both but their outlooks differ. Take the instance of the cinema. There are pictures moving on the screen. Go and hold them. What do you hold? It is only the screen. Let the pictures disappear. What remains over? The screen again. so also here even when the world appears see to whom it appears hold the substratum of the i after the substratum is held what does it matter if the world appears or disappears the agnani the ignorant one takes the world to be real whereas the gnani the knower of the self sees it only as the manifestation of the self it is immaterial if the self manifests itself or ceases to do so talk 66 a letter was received containing some learned questions pertaining to memory sleep and death it looked at first sight that they were cogent yet baffling to answer but when the master was approached on the subject he disentangled the skein very nicely pointing out that all such confusion was due to the non-differentiation of the real i 
from the false eye. The attributes and modes pertain to the false eye and not to the real eye. One's efforts are directed only to remove one's ignorance. Afterwards, they cease and the real self is found to be always there. No effort is needed to remain as the self. Talk 67 A visitor said, There is a trifling halting place in my meditation. When I ask myself, Who am I? My reasoning proceeds as follows. I see my hand. Who sees it? My eye. How to see the eye? In a mirror. Similarly, to see me, there must be a mirror, which is to supply the place of the mirror in me, is my question. Maharishi, then why do you inquire, who am I? Why do you say you are troubled and so on? You could as well remain quiet. Why do you rise out of your composure? Devotee, inquiring thus helps me to concentrate. Is concentration the only benefit? Maharishi, what more do you want? Concentration is the thing. What makes you come out of your quiet? Devotee, because I am drawn out. Maharishi, Enquiry of who am I means finding the source of I. When that is found, that which you seek is accomplished. The gist of Maharishi's words seem to be that one should make a concerted effort and not give it up, baffled with a defeatist mentality.